Can I see your dude's hand? Yes. Looks like you're definitely... Oh, that... Do you have wings? Um... I do. I would like to guess. And we should... We should definitely... Inadvertently talk shit about Michael as it starts. Oh, we will. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. And that fucking Michael dude... No, I'm kidding. Uh, we're actually filming a podcast right now. We are. And the director, Michael, is not here. So this is the... Bink film unhinged edition. We got shirts with words. We're There's giving, no supervision. We're he giving shout outs. No, legends. don't. He's going to freak out when he hears that. I should put something on it. He's going to snap. Hold on. Oh, boo. Dude, I have to. Boo. This, this whole, he's going to blur my shirt until I put this on and then it's going to go normal. <laughs> is this the intro? Welcome it back. It is the intro. Welcome back to the Bink Film Podcast. It's Th chaos. This is the intro. There's no director. What do we do? I, don't, I honestly don't know. I don't even know if this is recording right now. I got the red button on my side. So, while I'm covering up my latest mistake, uh, today's episode... We're going to be talking about good and bad video game remakes. And we're going to cover both remakes and remasters because... There is a difference. There is a difference. Um, we're going to cover them both. We'll talk about the highs and the lows. And I was talking to Eric about this earlier. And, and if you've got suggestions on this, please feel free to drop them in the comments. But I've been fortunate enough to... I don't think I've played a bad remaster or a remake of a game. Now, I've seen some bad remakes of movies, but that'll be... Um, our episode later at a later time. So, um, I wanted to kick this off with, uh, what is, what's, what's the difference between a remaster and a remake in your opinion? So the difference between a remaster and a remake, a remaster is usually when they take the existing game in its state yes. in the same engine and they just upscale graphics prime example of this would be like the the remaster of halo combat evolved yes or everything was the same the first remake remaster of the last of us part one yeah okay that makes sense there's and then a remake i think correct me if i'm wrong i haven't had time to play it yet i have no time for video games these days it seems like which is tragic because i absolutely adore video games we need another pandemic we but honestly yeah i mean <laughs> maybe swine flu will mutate or something <laughs> oh man you can't go to work damn that's a bummer mm -hmm. but um they remade uh dead space yes, recently i played it. It, it so it is a remake correct there are parts of the story that are different cor correct it's been so long since I played that original one. Um, okay. But, yes, they they restructure. Now, th this one, I would say, is maybe closer to a remaster. Because the story in general goes in the same direction. Yes. There's just certain things that are different along the way. There's some, like, quality of life things they change with the level layout and stuff. Okay. But... I, I would say that, that that Dead Space remake qualifies as a remake, but not by a lot. Compared to something like Final Fantasy VII okay. or Resident Evil 4, which is a complete remake, you know? And maybe yeah. someone will argue that, and maybe they have some good points on it. But just from my experience, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I felt about Dead Space. It, it was good, though. It was really good. When Dead Space 1 first came out... That was one of the scariest games I've had. That might still be yes. the scariest game. That that one in Dead Space 2, those first two games weren't messing around. Mm -hmm. And I almost dropped an F-bomb there because Michael's not here. He said we can swear. No, he didn't. He did. No, I'm not going to do it. He did. I'm keeping it PG. Do it. Swear. No, for the fans. Do it. No. Do it. We That second Dude, game. Just, just fucking swear. Oh, my God. Now you've done it. Okay, fine. That just, second just game. Just stop. Can we just pause? It? Just swear. Just yell it. Darn. No, just, just yell it. <laughs> Fuck! There we go. Anyway, feel better? I do feel better. So, that second game when it came out was legitimately terrifying. They weren't holding back on that. There are some scenes in that game that are... That'll stick with you. I remember the one in particular where you're walking down a hallway and there's all... I think they were the actual aliens in, like, tanks. Do you remember that part? Oh, yeah! And then they Like bust. the containment tanks. Yeah, yeah and they you're break like, out. I know they're going to break out. Oh, God! Out. Yeah, everything that you know is going to happen <laughs> happens, and it still bothers you. Yeah, but there's also parts effective. where you think something's going to get you, and it doesn't get you. They also had 
those Velociraptor style monsters mm -hmm. that would actually the AI in that game was wild because one of them would get your attention and like make you chase it while the other two would get behind you or like <laughs> corner you somewhere it was bizarre I'd never played a game that was legitimately smarter than me because I was like oh, I'm gonna chase down this dinosaur and I'm gonna I'm gonna run it down and gun it down and then you catch it corner it and then he's got homeboys to the left and right and it's this is not that's not right there was also the scene, do you remember the scene where the mom is in the nursery portion of the building? Like, it's a nursery. There's, like, blocks and bright colors and alphabet. And God, I don't. She's, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, like, you don't interact with it. It's just one of those scenes that you just see happening behind glass. Like, you can run right past it if you want, I think. And this woman is in there, and I think she's, like, gouged out her eyes or something, or she's, she's just lost her mind. And she's like, come to mommy, come to mommy. And this, those babies that blow up, which is also another weird thing that, not weird, just terrifying thing that happens in Dead Space. Babies explode. And she's like, come to mama. That's right. And the baby like jumps into her arms and then blows up and the whole window just, <laughs> just painted red. And like, oh, that's how this is going to go. And that's relatively early in the game. Did you play the Final Fantasy VII remake? So, fun fact, I've never played a Final Fantasy game in my life. Okay. Well, Which is bad. I know they look cool. I don't get into... Outside of Pokemon, turn-based combat... Correct me if I'm wrong, that's what Final Fantasy is, is turn-based combat. Usually, yeah. Outside of Pokemon, I just don't get into turn-based so, combat. The Final Fantasy VII remake was interesting because... That game is so loved by so many people. Yeah, and when which I've heard. Remake's coming out... And there's a lot of pressure, you know? Yeah, don't mess Pe up. Yeah, people are expecting a lot out of this. Are there games that you think shouldn't be remade? Maybe, but we'll get to that. Okay. So this game comes out, the the remake, and I'm playing it, and they change a bunch of stuff. Now, I'm going to get into some spoilers here. So you're warned spoilers for Final Fantasy VII Remake. It should be on the screen right now in Flash. And if you like letters. those games, don't click off of this right now because yes. you don't want this spoiled. No, don't click off. Just fast forward. Or that. Don't leave. So... You start playing the game, and these, like, ghost things start popping up. Okay. And they're, like, cock-blocking you from doing things. And it was like, why is this in the game? Stop changing things. Stop putting these... Stu it's just stupid. Just get rid of it. I want to play the right. game, the story that I know and I love, right? Yeah. So you're playing through the game, and it keeps happening over and over and over again. You get to the end of the game, and you reach the sequence that now you're completely, like... The end is almost completely different from the original and you are fighting these like arbiters of fate or whatever okay and you kill them that's and, a bold name for, and, a, yeah, for the, a person the game ends and now granted i'm stupid so i'm like that was terrible what what did i just play that was horrible and i'm like frustrated so i look up some youtube videos and my mind was just blown dude be mostly because I'm stupid, but also because it was genius what they did in this game. Yeah. So they they set it up in such a way that they're, this isn't necessarily a remake. It's a sequel to the original. Really? But you think it's a remake until the end of the game. And what happens is those ghost things that were popping up and cock blocking you, well, if you pay extra attention... They're preventing you from doing things that would be outside the plot of the original game. Okay. So at the end, when you kill the Arbiters of Fate, I think they were called that, when you kill them, it's then explained to you that, like, we are now outside the timeline and anything can happen That's now. That's just weird. So it's like an alternate reality of the original game and it's actually really really cool because i've never seen someone come up okay. with something like that i'll before. take your word for it because like when somebody just you describing that makes me think that it's just unnecessary when people start talking about alternate universes and timelines i'm like okay we've we've run the course of our material and how, how like, do we really need to be adding on to this it's why i don't like the uh uh, Marvel's getting into it right now mm -hmm. where they're just like, ah, different timelines. Whoa, what if this didn't happen? It's like, maybe you have used up the source material for this. And that's okay. It's I, okay to move on. I think the reason it works in this context is because that game has so many moments of, man, what would have happened if this character didn't die? Or what would have happened if yeah. this happened? 
most games you don't have a lot of that. Yeah. Especially for a game that's been around for thirty years or whatever, you know, twenty five years roughly. That's fair. But then when you come back and you're revisiting it and it still has all of that like the music and the the story and the characters, like the heart the of nostalgia. the game and the nostalgia yeah. is still there. The member berries. But then you realize you're also getting more. Yeah. Like you're getting to see characters that were dead know that they died previously and now they're back and they're trying to like redo their mistakes. That's like some of. Spider-Man No Way Home kind of stuff, kind right? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. For all I know, the second one comes out in I think February. Okay. Who knows? Maybe it does just completely go off the rails, and it's like, why didn't you guys just stick with? Yeah. But where it is right now, at the end of the first one, it's it, it was really cool. There are certain games that don't need to be remade. I think they were good as they were, and the stories were good as they were, and the multiplayers were good as they were. I wanted to start off with a bad example, and I, I thought about this, and I couldn't really think of, like I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, I haven't been misfortunate enough, or, or I've been lucky enough, I should say, where I haven't played bad remakes but the two that did jump out at me the three now that have jumped out at me are the the new modern warfares and when modern warfare one two and three initially came out the story the campaigns were awesome it was awesome think about modern warfare one and how that starts yep. just going room by room on a ship and crawling in the fields with right the, ghillie suit. the gill all gillied up and then modern warfare 2 has the invasion of the united states where you're like what that's mm-hmm. crazy and modern warfare 3 takes it another level it's like all right boys we're invading, you know, Germany because because Russia's in there, and we're about to go beat some wholesale behind. And it's great that ending scene with Makarov hanging there and Price lighting his cigar. It was perfect. Did not need to be touched. And this is why I think Call of Duty needs to. They got to switch to a longer development cycle, and, and take actual years off. Like it's okay to put out a game and then support that game for 2 years. It's so hard for game studios to switch to that because Because the money prints itself. I yeah. know that I get it. I got it. I understand but it. But no, yeah. Well, so <laughs> I only ever played the originals. Yeah. Really actually, I think I only played Modern Warfare 1 and 2. I don't think I played 3. So explain to explain to me and others who may not know, what's the difference when you say it's a remake? Is it like a It's a complete remake. Really? The story so Modern Warfare 1, which came out in 07, I think. Somewhere around there. I, it might have been... It was 07, because World of War was 08, and then MW2 was 09. Because um, that was back when they only had two companies working on them, uh, Treyarch and Activision. So it, it was really two-year development cycles. And uh, MW1, uh, 2007, is night and day different from MW1, 2019. It's a completely different story. The characters are the same. But the story itself is vastly, vastly different. Which is also weird to me because these characters that you, whose names you know, including the villains, are all doing different things now. And they don't show up when you expect them to show up. So, prime example, the, the main villain of Modern Warfare 1 in uh, 07 was this guy named Zakaev, which led to Modern Warfare 2's villain being Makarov, and then he's the primary protagonist in uh, Modern Warfare 3. Um, Makarov doesn't show up until MW3 now. And Modern Warfare 3, the multiplayer admittedly is a step up from Modern Warfare 2, the, the newest ones. But the campaign is just terrible. And I know mm-hmm. everybody likes to say, well, nobody plays Call of Duty for the campaigns. Well, some of us do. And I used to. The stories, when done correctly, are a lot of fun. And credit where it's due, this the, the Modern Warfare that came out in 2019, the remake of MW1, was pretty good. The story was good. The multiplayer was good. Um, I bought, I played that one for a little bit, and then I bought Modern, War, Modern Warfare 2. And the multiplayer was all right. It was kind of so-so. And the story was about the same. It was, it was kind of so-so. It was, it was cool, but it wasn't amazing by any means. And it just left this taste in my mouth of... You know, was this necessary? Mm-hmm. Did we really need this? You, you took a, a essentially what was arguably the best series in Call of Duty, which was Modern Warfare. And people are going to argue that Black Ops is better or that whatever is better. And then that's fine. But, uh, you know, I feel like the, the one of the more well-received series, possibly the best received series in Call of Duty was the Modern Warfare series. And I think they realized they were out of ideas. And they were like, we gotta, we got to keep that money printing, baby. 
and they sent it back out, redid it. And it sounds like what they're doing for the next game is uh, Black Ops. They're redoing Black Ops, but it takes place during like the Gulf War, which I think is interesting. You're not essentially I – and mean, we'll see what happens if they use the same characters and villains as they did in uh, – the, the first Black Ops series, but if they don't, I think that's a good way to go about it. If you want to, you know, keep that theme, that style, like, you know, because, you know, Black Ops was, you know, these missions never happened and, you know, we're, we're behind enemy lines. And if you want to keep that theme and keep calling it Black Ops and just do it in a different time period, I'm fine with that. But if, you know, the same characters come out, you know, Reznov, he's back in this and it's, oh, God, you know, we're just doing it now, but in the 90s, it kind of defeats your purpose. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I would much rather you, just like I said, give longer development cycles, come up with new, interesting ideas, which they can do. And the problem is, is the COD community loves to tear apart anything that is not um, distinctly Call of Duty, we'll call it. I thought Call of Duty Advanced Warfare had one of the most fun campaigns I've ever played. And I thought the multiplayer was interesting. It played a lot like Quake. It was very fast, very... Um, rapid movement and cod players didn't like that because it was so distinctly uncall of duty like why do you think that video game remakes are so much more positively received than movies because as long as it's fun it's you're, you're gonna get a good reception and i think people don't mind something new when they're in direct control of it which in a video game you are you are in control of what happens Whereas a movie or a television show, when you remake something, the, the player has no say in it, right? So the player has no say in the outcome. They have no say in what happens at all. You just sit back and you watch. And y you don't have the player experience to lean on to make it fun. So like I mentioned with the Modern Warfares, Modern Warfare 3 is getting torn apart right now because the campaign is awful. But the people who play the multiplayer are saying that the multiplayer is absolutely phenomenal. It's a step up from MW2, and it's one of the best Call of Duty experiences that they've had. If the player is having fun, you're kind of forgiven for everything else that goes wrong. Mm -hmm. So guys like me who enjoy campaign experiences, Activision's not going to care what I think because the multiplayer is what sells that game. And I'm sure they're going to come out at some point and say, hey, you've made this the biggest Call of Duty release ever. Thank you so much to the fans. And all the people who are in the back going, stop buying this. Stop doing this. Make them do better. We're going to be hushed because it sells well. And again, if you only play multiplayer and you think the multiplayer is good, which what I've played, it is good. It is better than MW2. Then it doesn't really matter what I think. I also think that video games, like if you take the top tier... So AAA video games, Hollywood films. Yeah. Video games feel like, I'm not talking about money or sales or anything like that. The video games feel like they are more consistently enjoyable and yeah. well-received. Whereas movies these days feels like people who go see a film, it's 50-50, they either yeah. love it or they hate it. I have a theory on why that works as well, and it's because I feel like... Um, Hollywood has this problem, and I think it's why no video game has ever translated well to film, uh, where they think they know better than the people who made the source material. Oh, yeah. And it drives me insane. Yep. And it's it's why some books translate so piss poorly to the big screen, too, because somebody thinks they know better than somebody else. And the reality is, is that if you have really solid source material in front of you, just use it. Mm -hmm. Don't deviate from it. That's what, That's why we'll never get a Halo movie. Which is devastating to me because I adore Halo. Did you watch the show? I made it five episodes in and I stopped. It, it is it is the biggest travesty of Halo content that there is. And the fact that Microsoft and 343 put their stupid, ugly stamp on that and said, Yup, ship it. And uh, I was so excited for it. And then we get that stupid ass, you know... Before the release, they're like, well, just so you know, this this doesn't actually take place during the main Halo timeline. And everybody's like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, well, it's the it's the silver timeline. It's an alternate... <laughs> COVID! An, ah, it's an alternate reality. It's a, it's, a, it's a different timeline. I'm like, that is the dumbest thing you could have possibly done. The source material that is available for Halo 
Get, go outside the games. We don't want alternate. We want I, the one that we like. Exactly. If you would have given me Halo 1 just on the big screen with actors doing it, I'm in. I'm in. All day, every day. Yeah. And if you want to make a mini series out of it, The Fall of Reach has a whole plethora of content that could make a miniseries. You could follow the Spartan program from its inception to when they kidnap the kids to make them Spartans, going through their Spartan training, the Covenant attack on Reach, or the first contact at Harvest. There's a million different things that you can jam into a series if you really, really wanted to. And they decided, they're like, no, no, we're going we're gonna to do something. And there's certain things that that show got right, okay? Is, is it true that you get to see his butt? Oh, yeah, Master Cheeks is totally, totally <laughs> live and on screen. And the thing is, uh, he's banging a Covenant sympathizer. <laughs> like, that, I, I watched up to that no, episode. Man, it's deep. It's that, complex. Where that happened, and I was like, I'm fucking out of here, dude. Like, this is dumb. It's just dumb. Like, it's not that it's, let me, let me, let me clarify. It's not that it's bad Halo. It's bad sci-fi. Take that name Halo off of it and call it Space Marine 2552, whatever. It's still bad. It's just objectively bad. Nothing about it makes sense. Like, you have this alien race that's hell-bent on destroying all humans, yet they revere a human as a demigod. Why? Okay, How? I got one question for you before we move on to our trivia for the week. Well, no, I, I still have a couple of things to bring up. Well, you better, you better get moving oh, are we on. on? Where's the, where's it the... died. I got it on here. We're at 20 minutes already. Oh, okay. Well, we're fine. Keep going. Um, at what point do you think that video game remakes will go too far? I think this Call of Duty example is... Well, okay, I can't use that because it's still good. I think when they start going for the untouchables, right? The games that were done perfectly and they start trying to do them again outside of the, the remaster scope... That's when I think there will be a major problem. How when about somebody, this? oh, go ahead. When somebody comes along and takes a diamond, like God, take your pick. When somebody comes out and is like Skyrim, we're gonna do it better, and not like the forty-seven different remasters that they've done. But those, it's just those, like there was only one remaster, and the rest were just re-releases. And, yeah, <laughs> don't get me started. Or take uh like super mario 64 and nintendo's like yeah we're gonna do it better or pokemon uh gen one but we're gonna do it better games that were already objectively hey this is great it's perfect don't touch it when they start going after those then i think it'll be a step too far <clears throat> how about but, this i'm gonna be a studio ex- i'm gonna give all the studio executives money idea ready go for it annual Updates on video games instead of new using releases. AI upscaled textures through a subscription model. Oof. I don't know if I like <laughs> so that. So you're always up to date on the latest graphics on all your favorite video games for three ninety nine a month. Honestly, I could see, and you you jest, but I see somebody like Madden doing it. Those those are the games where that would actually make sense, right? Hey. Buy a copy of Madden, or make it free to play, even. Hey, download Madden, but if you want the newest shit, it's four bucks a month. Okay, I don't think anybody would... All the Madden players wouldn't say no to that. They would immediately... I would be so mad. Would you rather spend four ninety nine a month? I hate subscriptions so much. So you'd rather drop $70 every year? No. I would. No. There's games where it makes sense. Madden, FIFA, I don't like when people have permanent holds... Over my money. But it's not like you would lose the game. No, it's not. But then every time that you don't play it, you're just giving them money for no reason. Cancel the subscription. That's how gym memberships make their money, too. People yeah. sign up for a gym membership and they go twice and, and they forget they that, have it. You think that's good? I don't think it's a good thing, but I think... But you think it's 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 morally I correct. think it makes sense. I think... Instead of me paying seventy dollars for a reskin version of Madden every year, I would rather pay five bucks a month to get consistent updates. Spend the same amount of money. Well, you're not going to get consistent updates. <clears throat> but that's what I would want, right? Well, if, that's not what you're going to get. It's just going to be. Well, then it wouldn't be worth it, right? Like yeah, we're, we're talking about saying. what if? So like, what if they went to a subscription model and did it shitty? Like, no, obviously I wouldn't be down with that. <laughs> but if they did it right. But they won't do it right. There's games, like I said, where subscription models 
work. I think Call of Duty, um, Madden, all the sports games, Fortnite, Apex, all those games, the monthly subscription model works. It the the biggest game of all time. For who the biggest game of all time is a monthly subscription model. Works for who? For the players it and works for the companies. For the players because those games work as such, so that it, they're they're playing off of a live environment. I think we're gonna have to do the whole next episode on this topic. Which, which I mean, we're running out of time. Or we could just make this a long episode. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> Deal with it, dude. Next time, be here. Um, I think certain games. So, you, you got sixty seconds. We gotta do trivia. But I, I have to talk about... <laughs> there's so much more I want to go we over. We can't. You're talking about this now. <laughs> because it's a good topic. COVID. I think games that exist in almost like this live environment... Like sports games are in a live environment. They're emulating real live sports. So they have to give you live... Like you could do live updates. Like, oh, Patrick Mahomes breaks his leg. Like if you're in a league right now, oh, you can't use Patrick Mahomes because he... like Or some stupid crap like that. And and Call of Duty, which instead of these yearly releases, hey man, just put out one game every four years, call it. And then I'll subscribe monthly to get new maps. We used to pay for map packs, for Christ's sake. Like, it's not an uncommon thing. World of Warcraft, at its peak... Just had, because it's not uncommon doesn't mean it's the way it should be. But it's been proven that if it's done right, it works. Well, World of Warcraft charged you $15 a month. And yeah, had enough crazy. subscribers that it would have been like the fifth largest com- co- uh, country on the planet. That's crazy. Yeah, and it worked for the longest time. Wild WoW players are happy now. I know that in recent years, you know, missteps and 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 poor management have led to some pretty crappy WoW decisions. But for the longest time, that was widely regarded as like that's how you do a video game. That is done correctly. All right, you ready for trivia? Let me just first say before we get into trivia. An example of a game remake being done absolutely amazingly are the newest Doom titles. I haven't played them. Dude, those, minus how they treated Mick Gordon, minus how they treated Mick Gordon, the games themselves, oh, they are so good. Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, which came out in, I think it came out in 2020, are are perfect. They are perfect. I love them. They're awesome. It is just phenomenal. And you should absolutely check them out. So we're going to do some trivia. And there are some stakes. Like ribeyes or what's up? The next episode. I hate trivia, by the way. The next episode is going to be who whoever loses this current trivia has to do it. Do you mean- Unless you want to do it, then you can choose if you win. What do you mean I have to do it? So, we're going to play a game head-to-head right now. Okay. It's uh, Ultrasonic, Ice Light, Thundershock, Sam Light. Spark, Robo Joe. There's a lot of good ones on here. So, go ahead and pick your person. I've got them. Okay. Do you remember how to play this? <sighs> no. So, we take turns asking yes or no questions. Okay. About whether or not is your person this, is your person this. Can I just be like, is your person Blastroid? You can, but if you guess wrong, I automatically win the game. What? Yes. So. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, you gotta okay. narrow it down. I feel like there should be a three-strike rule when it comes to mm-hmm. guesses. I read the rules before we started. This is stupid. This is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up so the camera can see. I'm not. You should. I can't, because you could potentially see it then. No, you can't. Turn around and I'll hold it up. What? Turn around. I don't mean show the camera. I just mean hold it up so they can see what we're doing. Oh. Okay. I'll go first. Do you have uh, something in your hand? Uh, no. No. Nothing in your hand. Okay. And then it would be your turn. Do you have a darker skin tone? Uh, you're not allowed to ask questions like that. What? It's 2023. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I do not have a darker skin tone. Okay. So then you flip all the ones that don't fit that. That don't have dark skin tones? F- 
flip, like, close the ones that do have dark skin tone so you know that's not who it is. Does that make sense? Yes. Have you ever played Guess Who before? No. Never? <laughs> like, maybe once when I was... <laughs> okay, um, are you... I'm not allowed to ask this question either. Are you a woman? No. No, not a woman. Are you a man? Um, yes. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> Come on, this is fun. Um, do you have... Are you wearing something on your head? No. No. Do you have a cape and or cloak? Nope. No? No. Um, can I see your dude's hand? Yes. Well, looks like you're definitely... Oh, that... Do you have wings? Um, I do. I would like to guess. <laughs> You have to do it on your next turn, which means I got to guess here probably because I don't think anyone else has wings. Well, there's a couple. Um, uh, th this is way harder than the normal edition of this game. Are you, uh, Oh my god. In hindsight, who your character is is very obvious, and I should have known. <laughs> They're all the same. I should have known. Are you stupendous? No, I am not. Ah! I win. I, yeah, but it's because I know that you know It's who Eric it is. Eagle, isn't it? It is Eric. I am Eric. It was down between <laughs> Eric Eagle and Incredibug. Incredibug? That's who I had it down to. <laughs> and I looked at Eric Eagle, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was, just so you can see, Mr. Mist. Mr. Mist. Mr. Mist. Oh, all right. We got time for one more. We're going to do another game? We're going to do one more. What? No, we can't. I won. Like, I'm, I'm good. Like, no, I know, but we're going to do one more. Why? Why not? Oh, you're having fun? Yeah. Is that okay? That's not allowed. Michael's um, going to be upset that here, we're having open, fun. Open, <laughs> open the thing back up. I am. Like this, I mean? Yeah. And slide this out. Okay. And flip it over? Yeah. That's a thing you can do? It is now. Oh, it's regular ass guess who now. Yeah. That's stupid. But look, it's actually versions of the same people. We go from superheroes to like, are you Dave? <laughs> I actually, I don't know if I'm supposed to say, are you Dave? It might be, is it Dave? Which means people are probably going to flip out in the comments. <laughs> I have to ask it in the form of a question. What is a Dave? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can go first. Are you a woman? Um, no. You're not a woman? No. Do you have brown eyes? <laughs> it's so hard to see. No. Shit. What? I fucking knocked down. You said you're not a woman? Correct. And you said n no brown eyes? Correct. Um, no brown eyes. Are you wearing a hat? Hold on. Okay. Am I wearing a hat? Correct. I am not. You're not wearing a hat? Nope. Are you looking? No, that's too hard. Um, <coughs> this is a lame one, but are, are you a man? Am I a man? Yes. No. Do you have... Black hair. Uh, no. 
Do you have um green eyes? No. Oh, getting narrowed down. Are you white? Uh No. Do you have glasses? No. Oh. <laughs> This is intense. I know this is probably not intense for anyone, but this is kind of intense. Do you have a beard? Not a mustache, a beard. I do not. You don't have a beard? No beard. I know who it is. So I have to guess again. I got two left. Go. Are you... It's either Farah or Katie. Okay. <laughs> It's a 50-50 shot here. <laughs> COVID. <coughs> Shut up. Are you... The Muffin Man? Farah. I am. Yes! <laughs> Are you Al? <laughs> no, I'm Leo. What? Leo. Which fucking one is... I asked you if you had a beard... He doesn't have a beard. He has a mustache. You said that you didn't... You said not a mustache, a beard. And you said... No. You said, do you have a beard? Not a mustache. Not a mustache, beard. a beard. And I said no. Oh, fuck. I, I fucked myself on that. <laughs> I, would, I, I definitely would have had it that round then. Fuck. Uh, you shouldn't have said I know who it is. And then I would have guessed... I was going to say, are you wearing a hat? And then I would have known I, which one. Well, so you I, I was more fucked turn. anyways because Leo was covered because I <laughs> fucking... Uh. How do you rate Guess Who? <laughs> you know, honestly, that's a little bit more enjoyable than I thought it was. It goes <laughs> faster as an adult because you're not some stupid kid like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Seems tough. Like, no, this is The isn't... superhero one's tough because they all look the same. Like, they're all Well, you gotta like get specific. A... Like, are you wearing a cape? Like, mm -hmm. are you elemental in nature? I thought about asking that. I thought about asking that, too. But it went really well. All right. This has been fun. I, I, it's good to be back. After a long hiatus, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. I hope you guys had a safe and happy holiday. Uh, this has been the Big Film Podcast. Uh, again, we wish you a most uh, safe and happy holiday season. It's that time of the year. There's going to be a lot of traveling happening from now until 2024. So, And we hope to, to be with you guys into the new year as well. So, again, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time uh, with us here on this episode of the Big Film Podcast. It does mean a lot to us. We know you guys have a lot of options when it comes to entertainment choices and media to consume. We're thankful that you are partaking in ours. I am Joshua Rivers, your co-host. Across from me is Eric Gordonberg, the EGB. You can find us on social media. You can find me at the handle Stop That Rivers on Instagram and TikTok. You can find Eric Gordonberg on all forms of social media at the handle Eric Gordonberg. Our director, who's no longer with us, well, he's with us, just not today, uh, Michael Darwinberg. You can find him at the handle Michael Darwinberg on all forms of social media. You can follow the podcast on YouTube, TikTok. Spotify at the Bink Film Podcast, and you can also follow our main page, Bink Film, where you can find all sorts of great content, uh, including short films, behind-the-scenes action, and uh, a lot of just really good stuff. So thanks again for spending your time with us. We hope to see you on the next one. Uh, if you want to piss him off, um, yell, yell, cut. Cut! <laughs> He's going to hate that so much.